Ninja as a sport is so finicky. You know, yeah, you, you yeah. make one mistake and Very then you're done. Yeah. Which I think is one of the big aspects of it, and that's like a really important part, which I also like. You know, it's it's cool to have these competitions where you have to be on and you have to be on your A game or else you're done. Um, but also then coming like to something like this where you get to show your full potential. Let's do this. Let's go. All right, you guys ready? I am. Ready? Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome to Ninjaverse TV, the show where we take the best Ninja Warrior athletes and put them to the test. I'm Mike Graver. I'm Jordan Thurston. And today we have an awesome guest for you. We got Lucas Reality. Got it right that time? Yes, got it right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you guys know Lucas from uh, AW, you know him from NNL, you know, you know him from everything Ninja Warrior pretty much. Definitely Super stoked to have you, awesome. so thanks for doing this. Yeah, no, thanks for having me, guys. It's awesome to compete and now cool to be here. All right, so Lucas, I first met you when you were 16 years old, and your first competition here was a UNAA. Um, we had a pretty good upper body course uh, set up, um, but why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself and how, how you come to get so dedicated to Ninja Warrior and what you've been doing? I oh, mean, I've come a long way from there. Yeah. <laughs> Especially upper body, that's been like, my biggest thing. Uh, yeah, no, I've been training for about Five, five or six years at this point, I don't even uh, remember. I think five, which is crazy to think about. Uh, yeah, I started when I was 16. I always grew up watching the show. You know, that was like the biggest thing for me. So when I found uh, a gym to go to, I just instantly got hooked and I've been training ever since. Um, pretty much, I mean, I started off weekly. Quickly it turned into like twice a week and now I'm pretty much in the gym every day. So <laughs> what, what um, like, if you were gonna like just draw out a couple aspects about Ninja Warrior that you think really attracted you to the sport whether it be like you know uh, the skill part the challenging parts of it um the movements the athleticism what do you think are a couple aspects that you think uh got you hooked onto the sport yeah, i think movement was definitely a big part of it i've always been interested in like how the body moves and stuff like that and also just the fact that it was untraditional you know like it was so intensive athletically but it wasn't anything that a lot of people do normally you know so i knew that like Going into it, A, I could progress at it. I thought I would be pretty good. I was always climbing. Um, so I thought I could do pretty well at it. And then when I did first get the opportunity to, I just kind of jumped on it. You know, I realized like, oh, this is something that I can progress at. And I think that was a big thing too. It's like seeing the progression, like being able to know that I'm not just doing this to do it. Like yeah. when you play basketball as a kid, you're like, sure, I love basketball. I want to go to the NBA. Everybody else is getting better with you. Exactly. Time, yeah. But for this, it's like, okay, well, there's not a lot of people training. I see the direct progression in my training, and it's just so easy to piggyback off of that. And I think that's one of the things that drew, uh, drew me to the sport the most. You know, I've always kind of wanted that thing, like to really train hard for something. Yeah. That's kind of always how I've been. Um, Do you I, have like any athletic background, like growing up as yeah, like a kid or anything? I have a little bit, I uh, played a little bit of basketball, mostly ultimate frisbee uh, in high school, no like actual high school sports. Yeah. Um, but again, I was mostly like, I dedicated all my time to frisbee. You know, when I was in high school, like that's what I did. I 100% yeah. went all in, you know, I didn't bounce around. Yeah. Um, so I think that's kind of what I did with Ninja too. You know, like I was kind of like a freestyle type of sport that you could just like go all in on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Rather than bouncing around, that's never really been, I like being good at one thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Than, awesome, you know, man, awesome. Touching. Um, so you were in the first episode, um, we had Connor Galvin, we had Kavanaugh, yourself, we had uh, Nolan LaJoy, we had Luke Dillon, um, we did multiple events. Uh, what, are some of the, what are some of your thoughts on uh, competing for a Ninjaverse comp? Oh man, I really liked it. Um, I think one of the best parts is having multiple chances. Um, I think I thrive in that, I think a lot of us thrive in that environment, you know, and Ninja as a sport is so finicky, you know, yeah, you, you yeah. make one mistake and Very then you're done. Yeah. Which I think is one of the big aspects of it and that's like a really important part, which I also like, you know, it's it's cool to have these competitions where you have to be on and you have to be on your A game or else you're done. Um, but also then coming like to something like this where 
you get to show your full potential. You know, that, that's yeah. the goal that we've been talking about a lot yeah. is, you know, having the athletes come in, being able to play to their strengths with a smaller group. We know the level of the caliber of athletes they are, but we really wanted to give them something that you guys feel comfortable either, whether that's throwing bigger moves, going all out and really showing off that athleticism. So that way you have a format that allows that kind of promotes that yeah. um, performance as opposed to trying to hold back and get through cautious because I feel like we miss out on a lot of like big athletes and what they can do because you know, they fall off the balance off spoil, they, they make a simple mistake or a simple miss, you know, so um, it's good that you bring that up. Yeah, no, I think that's definitely like one of the things that I liked about it. Um, even just like going in with the people who were com I was competing against, you know, it's so easy like in other competitions to be like, oh, like, well, let's play it safe. But then like looking at who I was against, it's like, well, if I play it safe, I don't know, maybe I'll finish, maybe I'll do it, but I'm not going to beat these guys. You know, yeah. like, I have to. I have to set the pace, you know, and I think that's also something that's uh, intriguing about like the small environment. Um, it's just that like you, you know who you're competing against and you know what they're capable of. Yeah. So you can either hold back and sure, maybe you'll like ensure that you get through, but I mean, in the end, like yeah, you gotta take yeah. risks. You gotta have that competitiveness to drive yeah. you a little bit and motivate you to take those moves. That's awesome. Did you notice any like differences in whether it be like your approach, your mentality? Um, or your physical performance from this or like any other kind of like league like NNL, UNX and you know A&W or anything like that yeah. what are some of the differences that uh, you noticed? I think kind of what we touched upon like not feeling as pressured was big um, it definitely I, one thing I've been focusing on like as far as mentally training goes especially for like the upcoming seasons of A&W, NNL is kind of like turning the switch off in my mind that says be cautious and not necessarily cautious but like, I want to do the things that I know I can do. Yeah. Not yeah. just hold back because it's a big competition, you yeah. know? So, like, I think there's a lot of points on in the Ninjaverse episode where I went for things that, you know, I knew I could do and I felt comfortable doing. And maybe I wouldn't have done that in, like, an NNL just mm -hmm. because, you know, the stakes are higher. Yeah. Whereas here, like, it was nice to be able to put that to the test while also having pressure from other competitors because, you know, like, all right, I have to pull off this big move. But if I don't do it, then I'm gonna fall. Yeah. But if I don't go for it, then they're gonna beat me. Yeah. So it was a really good in between for me to kind of like mentally prepare um, mm -hmm. for what I want to do on the NNL and UNX. And I think that's kind of been my last season of NNL and UNX, and even the show was very like cautious, stay consistent, do moves I know I can do. Run to not make a mistake. Yeah, yeah. It, and I still went fast, and that's kind of like what I always do. But that doesn't mean that I'm not holding back. Yeah. You know, just because sure. I'm going fast. Yeah, it doesn't mean that I'm like pulling everything out. Mm -hmm. No. Nah. Yeah. So I think that's one thing I liked about this was I was able to put that to the test, and that's something that I want to use in my upcoming seasons of NNL and yeah. UNX. Because I think we talked about that too um, previously, where it's it's kind of like part of the process of improving, right? Like the overall goal is to not win this competition or win that competition, it's to constantly improve. Yeah. That way you can, you know, have the opportunity to win any competition, Definitely, you know, yeah. and, and getting comfortable throwing those bigger moves and going at a faster pace and taking those risks is definitely part of that process of yeah. like challenging yourself so that, yeah, maybe you did make a mistake, maybe it cost you a UNX qualifier or an uh, yeah. NNL win, but in the long run, that that's gonna make you the better ninja, you know, and, yeah. and part of that preparation. The, the that's a hard thing to like gauge as an athlete is like, Oh, hey, you might, you might have to yeah. sacrifice, you know, yeah. a run here for your long-term goal. Yeah. And I think that's something that I say in coaching a lot. And it's so easy to say it as a coach, but then to, do it. exactly like yeah. to do it for yourself is so much harder, you know, because yeah. Yeah. you want to, you want to be consistent. You want to be considered like quality all the time, yeah. you know? And if you fall, that throws in like, oh, hey, they fell. Like maybe they're not as good as you think. But yeah. in the end, like you said, you gotta fall and you have to go for things in order to get to that top level. Yeah, you definitely yeah. gotta push that, push the limit if you're gonna understand like what you need to work on and where you need to go in the, as far as your training goes. I um, think the NNLs do a good job of like giving you a space to try and do bigger yeah. moves, but like UNX and A and W, like you don't really have a lot of shot. It's kind yeah. of like one competition. And for UNX, they had what like three rounds. Yeah. Um, but so, each is different, you know. Yeah, so there's exactly. pressure in each round. It's yeah, not like, it's yeah. um, it, it I guess it has its benefits because it, it does give like anybody that that in you know yeah. that uh, may not be the strongest, but they just executed better at that mm -hmm. moment. Exactly. But Which think, is definitely what the show is like founded on. Yeah, you know, you it's know, like finding those gems. But I think like looking at it as a sport, I'd much prefer to see it as like 
the best having their their chances to to prove that and then like if all right if you're gonna beat them then you gotta be at your best you know as opposed to like the slight mistakes but um as far as like talking about the process and like the preparation um what do you uh like typically do for like preparing for comps is there anything special was there anything different from this comp from to like NW or just like about the the training aspect of it yeah i think i kind of let me fix this really quickly okay this is bothering me yeah i think i have like almost categ categories in my mind of like what I do for different styles. Like UNX and a and I definitely put a lot more pressure on myself um, just because I think it's like that elite level, you know? And the show is kind of a different sense because it's just kind of like more of a dream for me. You know, the show is great um, and I really enjoy the show, but as far as a sport, like I do feel like the NL and UNX are more of a sport. Um, whereas the show is awesome for what it is, you know, it gives people an opportunity to share stories. The biggest stage. Yeah, yeah it is yeah. the biggest stage. You know, it's what everyone looks up to. Mm -hmm. um, so for those, obviously in different ways, like I treat them really seriously and I, I typically will try to run a lot of courses specifically designed after those. Um, and I can recall in my training like five times, like I'm super specific about my course runs when I do them. Like I'll literally try and get into like, when we did Real Life CONX, like I tried to think about what Drew would put in. Um, and same thing on Ninja Warrior, like I don't just do big moves, like I want a quad step variation at the beginning, like preferably what they have on the show. Yeah. Um, and same thing, like second obstacle should be like a slider. And I don't really, when I'm training for the show, I don't want to switch that up. You know, I know that's what I'm going to see. I'm just gonna train that. And obviously it gets hard because like you're predicting things, yeah. but. Uh, yeah, there's always gonna be the randomness factor. Yeah, so I think for those, I'm a lot more strict about my training, like especially course running. Like if I'm training specifically for it, I want it to be accurate mm -hmm. and I want it to be good. Um, and, I, and I feel more confident when I do that. Um, whereas if I just put together a course that's like, okay, well. Whatever obstacles. Yeah, like a rock yeah. wall, you know? Yeah. Like sure, a rock wall is fine for like a different course, but I would never put that in my training specifically for AW. Because yeah. I'm never going to see it, you know? Yeah. Um, as far as NNLs go, uh, and even this, I, uh, one thing I've been working on too is just kind of keeping my training consistent and just popping in the comps. Um, and I think that's helped a lot. Um, rather than like specifically focusing, uh, obviously like mentally I prepare a lot, but as far as like physically, this year in particular, I haven't really let up too much on workouts, like leading into competitions like NNLs or UNAs or things like that. Mainly just because, I mean, we talked a little bit earlier about like how it's a process. Um, and I think like if I am taking those rest days before these like NNLs, well, maybe I'm missing out on a few training days yeah. that I could get, you know, better. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's one thing that like um, I started doing less of this year is like breaking before I guess anything else mainly. Yeah. Um, just because I, I want to keep training, you know? And yeah. It doesn't, it hasn't affected me too much. You know, I definitely feel a little bit of fatigue. Um, but honestly, sometimes I do feel better on courses when I'm a little bit tired. Yeah. You know, when my muscles have been worked like maybe two days before and I got a pretty tough workout and that's kind of when I feel best. Yeah. But, um, so like when you do course running, like are you going to run through that course and then take like a long break and then run it again? Are you going to do it like you know, repeatedly with limited amount of rest? Um, are you gonna do it with, you know, exercises in between? Um, like kind of like, how do you set up that session? Yeah, I do a lot of blocks. Um, uh, my girlfriend, Kira, pretty much trains all of my programming. Um, Kira Tallo, Kira's an athlete. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so she does all my programming um, and she throws a lot of course running and then different blocks of things like before and after. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of it's focused on power because that's one of my biggest weaknesses. Um, so especially recently, I've been doing a lot of power training, um, mainly power endurance. Um, but yeah, I think another thing that I'm bad at is taking rest. Um, I have a hard time figuring out how much I need. Yeah. You know, like sometimes I, I want to be fresh, but maybe I'll overdo it. Yeah. You know, yeah, I'll take yeah, too yeah. much. We talk about that all the time. Like, yeah. Yeah. You know, a rest period is going to completely change whatever you're working on. Yes, whether it's conditioning, yeah. strength, power, mm -hmm. technique. It, it all depends on how long you rest. Yeah, you know? yeah. it's like it is, it's a, the one factor that anybody who exercises or does anything it's like completely overlooked. Yeah, yeah so. it is. It's so hard, for, especially for me. Like, I, honestly, right now I don't really know if I were to run a course. You know, I would feel pumped, but I don't know how much rest I need. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe it's thirty seconds for me to feel good, but maybe it's you know sometimes in the middle of courses I'm like ten seconds in and I feel 
just as well as if I'm 40 seconds in, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that's been one of the toughest things. And the same thing goes for like after courses, you know? If I'm pumped after a course, I don't know, I take like three minutes and then if I take six minutes, I feel the exact same. So yeah, yeah, yeah. that's been a, a tough thing for me to figure out. Um, and I think I'm still working on it. Uh, definitely in like pure workouts, I struggle with going continuously. That's one of the things that I struggle with for sure. Um, but it's something that I've been getting better at. Um, and I don't, I don't really know what it is. My cardio isn't too bad, but I don't know. Um, like, when you train for like A&W or UNX, do you train your rest periods? Like, do you try and focus on, mm -hmm. if I'm doing like an A&W course and I'm uh, practicing like a finals course, um, are you trying to focus on like, this is when I'm going to rest in the course? Or are you training like, whenever I get tired, I'll rest? A, a little bit. Yeah. Um, I think more so just trying to figure out where I would probably rest. Okay. Um, a lot of it does factor into like, hey, what course am I running? How do I feel? Yeah. But then also, like you said, if I'm at an obstacle five, I want to force myself to take rest. Yeah. For, for AW. Yeah. Um, or before the salmon ladder, I force myself to take rest because I know that I'm 100% going to want it. The yep. adrenaline's going to be high. Yeah, yeah. Um, but a lot of like specific obstacles, I think it's it, it's hard for me to gauge. So I kind of just, I, I guess I more play it by okay. Play long term rest. I play by how tired I am. Yeah. Short term rest, I can play. Okay. I guess it is the best way I can describe it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Cause yeah, obviously like before the salmon ladder and before obstacle five are places that I certainly want rest. Yeah. A breath before the balance obstacle. Yep. Other than that, it's kind of, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Probably before Obstacle 9. Yeah, certainly. Definitely before Obstacle 9. Yeah. 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 Um, could you walk through, like, what that training session would look like? Like, if you were going into TA and you were like, I'm going to train courses today. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to train an A&W finals course. What, is, what does it look like, like, from start to finish, if you don't, if you're able to talk about yeah, that? Yeah, no, I'm, uh, a lot of what I've been doing recently, um, as far as just training goes, like I said, it's a lot of power endurance. So I've been doing sprints into, you know, mini courses and stuff like that. Um, but if I were to go into like an A&W style course, um, honestly, most of it's just drilling that. Okay. Uh, I pretty much specifically when I'm, when I'm doing like a UNX or an A&W course, that's kind of what I'm there for. Yeah. Uh, and I like to do multiple different ones. Okay. Obviously it's a little hard to set up because you have to yeah. change things yeah. out. And, because like I said, I, I like That's to That's the longest part of training. I know. Switching out, coming up with a course and switching out obstacles. Yes, and making sure it's like up to par. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. you don't want to like half, half ass yeah. what you're doing and then have it be like, oh, well, that didn't feel <laughs> accurate at all. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, when I go into like a or court, like specific course training, yeah. uh, typically that's kind of what I do for okay. the day. I um, mean, I'll warm up a little bit. I'll run the course a few times. Um, I've been doing different runs and trying to work on like putting my best run first, you know, like pulling out all my moves first. Yep. And then my second run, I'll dial dial it back a little bit. Oh, really? Um, yeah, that's kind of what I've liked doing lately. Um, I feel like generally on courses, when I run the first time, I am more cautious, and then the second time, I'm too reckless. So I'm trying to reverse it uh, yeah. so that I can, you know, in these NNLs, my yeah. first run can be my best run because that's gotcha. all I have. Yeah. But then also making sure that I'm conditioning myself to not just be reckless on my second run. You know, even though you felt the obstacles, yeah. that doesn't mean you should make silly mistakes. And yeah. I think that's something that I struggle with a lot. So that's kind of, I've been trying to flip flop that. So my first run of courses will be like all out full sprint. Okay pull out all the moves, and yeah. then my second run is, okay, what do I think is practical? You know, are gotcha. there places that I feel like I shouldn't have done something, or, yeah. you know, I barely got it, or I fell, you know? Yeah. So, that's kind of been my um, course training lately. That's pretty like interesting. That. Will you will you just do two runs of the course, or will you, like, if you do a third run, how would that compare? Like, is that just gonna be like, all right, I've done these two, I went all out the first one, I kind of dialed it back, let's find a middle ground, or like, is it more, I know what's acceptable, what's not, let's just go all out again. Yeah, I think third run is very conditional on how the other ones go. Okay. Um, especially recently, you know, I've had runs where either both things will go awesome. Yeah. You know, like they both went really well. Um, and then I'll really try and push it. Like maybe something that I didn't think was practical, but maybe I'd be able to do, I'll yeah. go for it. 
But then I've also had some runs where like my first run just did not go well at all. You know, I fell on like three things. And then, you know, I mean, it's a snowball effect. And I think all ninjas know this too, where like your first run, if it goes poorly, then your second run, it's like, okay, you either gotta like really calm down or it might snowball. Um, So I think I've had a few snowball effect ones, but I've also had a few where it's like, my first run's a disaster. My second run, I mellowed out. And then the third run is just kind of like, whatever I'm feeling. (laughs) So yeah, it's it's very case by case. Um, But yeah, really focusing on efficiency. Yeah. In general, that's kind of like all of what my course running is, is just okay. be efficient. And sometimes it honestly feels like more work than play because <laughs> I'm like so hyper-focused on like, okay, I got to be efficient here. Yeah. But, but that's actually what's been like working with me. Uh, it, yeah, it gets lot. hard when you uh, have to like analyze and reanalyze yeah. like why you're not uh, completing an obstacle or like what's going wrong and like you have to take these like real hard look at your... Oh, definitely. Yeah, it gets brutal. Yeah, it gets really tiring and I don't know. I, uh, I've been feeling good about it, but there are definitely times where it's like, well, this is just a brutal training. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dude, I get like mentally down on myself. Yeah. Like, I'm just like, God, yeah, it's, why, why do I suck today? I know, it's, right? It's yeah. so hard. From it, way out in left field, how often do you switch up your courses? Ooh, switching like, up courses. Do you spend like a week on one course and then switch it or? Do you like switch it up every time? Oh uh, yeah, I'll, I switch it up every time. Oh, right. is, yeah, I'm like pretty much always new. How do you track progress? progress? Uh, do you? Or um, is it just kind of a feel thing? Mostly a feel thing. Okay. Um, a lot of my progress comes from more like, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I don't really do a whole lot of progress tracking. Mm. It's more just feeling. Um, I, I talk with Kira a lot. Obviously, we yeah. live together and work together, so it's easy. Um, but yeah, I definitely like break down how I feel after a lot of my runs with her. Okay. Um, particularly like if there's a point that I think I need to work on, like I'm trying to think, I, th- I think one of my recent training sessions I said when, so, oh yeah, I was doing sprints into courses. Okay. Um, and it was an easy speed course. Um, no, 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 no. Sorry. It wasn't sprints into courses. I was doing dead hangs into, I was doing max pull-ups into courses. Oh damn. And I would take a little bit of rest in between. Okay. Um, and one of the things I told her was like, when I was going, my flash grip, I, I don't know what else to call it, like my quick grip yeah, felt really Contact strength. Really contact strength. Yeah. felt awful. Yeah. But everything else felt great. Like my endurance, my overall endurance, like I felt like I could hang the whole time. But you know, when I threw uh, a sideways cliffhanger lache, and I actually like let go and like lacheed for it. Yeah. I peel it like every single time. Well, I think you know? part of it is when you accumulate the lactic acid from like a max out or a close to max is that that lactic acid is going to slow you, your yeah. muscle and you know how fast they can contract. But what's also going to happen is going to promote that blood flow, right? So now your yeah. capillaries are more open, you get more blood and more oxygen. So um, a lot of times, like that's I find people rest too long between course yeah. runs, you know, and they settle down and then they start to lose the technique. But that's probably what your experience is that that lactic acid, both the benefits and the yeah. negatives of it. And that was definitely something that I enjoyed, like breaking down with her, because that's something that I want to work on. You know, like yeah. the fact that when I am tired, you know, like my my grip is pretty good, but sometimes, like I was saying before, my rest. I don't really know what to do. Mm -hmm. So knowing that like, hey, you're actually good grip wise, even though you feel pumped, you're good. Yeah. But maybe you don't throw this crazy little shit, you know, like, so just trying to work on those things. Um, Yeah. Knowing how you move when you're tired, it's a huge skill to have in Ninja. Yeah, for sure. Well, even like the condition aspect of it, you know, fatigue will ruin anybody's technique. Yeah. yeah. So the more conditioned you are, the more prepared you are. the, and knowing what you need to do in yeah. different circumstances. Yeah, and, and sure. you know, and that's not even including that's just the physical aspects of it. But you know, your mental environment is definitely going to increase that heart rate more, and you're yeah. breathing heavier. So, you know, the um, if you're just like kind of playing on obstacles, then that could be the difference maker in a competition. Because as that as you lose that condition aspect of it that you gain from these you know structured workouts, then yeah. that's going to um, your technique is going to drop a lot sooner than everybody else's. You know, yeah. so. That's pretty important. Did we get into the most difficult session yet? We, no, not really, but we kind of just yeah. been talking about yeah. all sorts of training. Yeah. What, you, what would you say is your most difficult, so like throughout the, like a week or a month, yeah. whatever you structure, however you structure your training program, but like, um, what would you say is like your absolute most difficult session? Like one that either difficulty because you hate it so much, yeah. <laughs> or like, like my most difficult session is like if I gotta run three miles. 
Yeah. Uh, like that's, that's going to be, <laughs> that's like, that's, great. that's the mental, that's like, day. that's the mental battle where it's like, I got to put on Rocky yeah. music and like, <laughs> Let's get go. jacked get up hyped. to go run three miles at like an eight minute pace. Yeah. <laughs> like, I do a fast three miles either, you know, yeah. just like, uh, try, but like, uh, whether it's like mental or just like physically tough or something, you just like, you know, grind out or anything like that. What would you say is the most? Yeah, I think, uh. A lot of what I've been working on lately and one of my biggest weaknesses is definitely power endurance and I think that just kills me. Really oh my god. It's brutal. It's just, I think like, especially going leg power into upper body power, mm -hmm. like leg power it just drains me. I actually have like quite a bit of leg power. Um, my upper body power is really where I like need to work. Mm -hmm. um, but when I do leg power, it just mentally... The muscles are so big that they yeah. take up so much. <laughs> so it's much. like, just everything just, just gets down yeah. legs and that's yeah. it. That's why we all look like we work out in prison. Like, yeah. <laughs> so you got jacked up a body and chicken legs. It's just, it's yeah. just hard. Yeah. It's tough. It's just like, it throws me off so much mentally. Yeah. Uh, and then like power endurance, especially upper body. Um, I just tire out quick. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, like just working through the pump and everything. Yeah, for sure. So that's been uh, probably the hardest for me, um, and I'm definitely working on it. And I, I felt like a huge improvement lately, um, especially like I've been doing a lot of salmon ladder skipping mm -hmm. just to work on it because I think that's a good gauge, yeah. you know, of like where your power level is. Like, I can, so many obstacles are relatable to that specific yeah, movement. You know, it's such like, a big explosive yeah, movement, like the the kip and pull up and the you know the big explosive upper body dynamic stuff. You can do that move on several types of obstacles, not just a salmon ladder, yeah. you know, so the salmon ladder is more of like the tool to drill that, but, yeah. Um, but yeah so that's definitely. been a good benchmark. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. How many skips can you do? Um, I, right now, like when I'm relatively fresh, I feel really comfortable skipping, skipping. Um, okay. I haven't so done a whole, yeah, mostly I just do doubles. Um, I can do like swinging backwards. Can you skip coming down? Yeah. Yeah, 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 I feel relatively. That's always the part that gets me. Yeah, I yeah. feel like it just like takes like that extra little swing to just feel. Like, oh, okay, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> See, that's what I that's what I can get behind because I feel like comfortable with timing and placement. It's yeah. that like just pure explosiveness. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah, it's interesting. We'll have to get like a setup to where we can see how yeah. much you can just max and skip out. And just oh man, it's not gonna be a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but it's then, the it, two. <laughs> then again, though, I I was actually talking this with Kira a few days ago. Um, I think I use my momentum very well to generate power. I think you do that on all obstacles, though. Yeah. I think you have definitely. I think that's what you know. You talk about drilling like technique and efficiency so much, and if I was gonna say that you have a strength as a ninja it's the level of body awareness that you yeah. can put into the obstacles and you know the amount of controls and you know these guys will see it when they watch your um when they watch your runs um that everything looks almost effortless you know and yeah, it's I um i definitely drill it a lot <laughs> yeah and I, 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 you're just talking about how like most of my training sessions are just like course runs are all so hyper focused on efficiency yeah and i i, I definitely think it, it shows and it's working because like I'm not going to call you weak, but I definitely <laughs> think like you are proof that technique and efficiency stands above yeah. everything else. You know, For sure. It, it, it jumps yeah. all, all cards, you know. No, and I definitely think like that's one thing that going into the Ninjaverse episode I was worried about is like, I, realistically, I try and be like as aware of my own strengths and weaknesses as possible. Like I know I'm not as strong as, like, like no one's a great example. Luke is a great example. Yeah. They're, they're just they're freaks. On the real, they're freaks in nature. Yeah. Like yeah. even Dave, like Dave is just someone who he is so gifted athletically. Mm -hmm. I know like, you know, I'm, I'm a good athlete, but I'm nowhere near physically that gifted. Yeah. You know, like I've had to really work for like a lot of power and a lot of like physical strength. So I think drilling like the technique and stuff yeah. has been like a big thing for me. It's like, yeah, I know yeah, I can make up on that. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. All right, we're gonna jump into some spoilers for the episode now. So if you guys haven't seen the episode yet, Stop watching right here. Go and watch the episode. Um, you sound like a YouTuber. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you gotta. You need to train. First, hit the like button. Smash that like button. We haven't said that yet, so now that you just said it, we're just gonna like insert you yeah. into it. Yeah. Just like, Smash edit, that like just like curse out. Just like bleep yeah. out. Yeah. Bleep that, bleep part that out. like yeah. button. <laughs> Not YouTubers, man. Yeah, but we will take money from YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. I don't know how to not sound like a YouTuber yet. <laughs> I'm just going by what I watch. Yeah, I get it. I get it. I get it. Um, all right. So jumping into the events, yeah. um, can you talk about which event you like the most, which one you like the least, and a little bit of why and both? 
All right. Um, definitely the course is one thing that I always like. You know, I, I'm a course person. The so full course or the mini full course? course? Sorry, yeah. Full course runs, I think, just is kind of what I like doing the most. Um, it just, it's all of Ninja. You know, you gotta pace yourself, you have to know when to take risks, you have to. I think that's one of the coolest parts about the sport is like just how it's a marathon, not a sprint in pretty much every course, even a speed course, you gotta think. Yeah. You know, you can't sure. just yeah. go, because if you go, you're gonna make a mental mistake. Yep. Um, and, or even you might overlook something. So I think that's definitely my favorite. I really like just running courses in general. Least favorite, I honestly think, was the mini course. Really? I just was sure it was gonna be the grip. I was gonna, no, I was so, yeah. I <laughs> love grip. I think that's something that I need to, it's like, my power isn't that great, but my grip endurance is pretty good. I, um, I thought for sure you were definitely a sleeper going into the grip gauntlet. Yeah. Just because you are very efficient, so you might have had more energy going into, like where I, I do the think power people, guys get I fatigued. think people sleep on me with my grip. Yeah. I, I How have, much do you remember your run on the grip gauntlet? Because there's something I want to ask well. about. I, I remember pretty well. Because on the your second run through the uh, the peg bombs, uh -huh. you shimmied across, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you must have done like double the moves that Nolan did, and yeah. he only made it like one or two pegs further than you did. Yeah. So that's something that I feel really comfortable with, is like getting to that verge of almost, because as soon as I started the peg bombs, I knew like, I mean, A, I'm not comfortable crossing. So my first run, I was like, I'm fresh, I'm just gonna do it, because I know it's gonna be the most efficient. Yeah. Um, but when I got there, I was like, there's no way. Like, and I think watching Connor, I think Connor crossed and yeah. got stuck. Yeah. I knew that was what was gonna happen to me. I knew if I crossed, no way, I was done. So I, I do think like one advantage for me is I can shrug a lot. Yeah. You know, my just pure arm hanging strength is one of my biggest strengths is like I can, I feel comfortable. Like even on cliffhangers, like yeah. I can hang one arm pretty There's a big difference from hanging with straight arms and yeah. the back, you know, so yeah, that's like, true. Uh, you know, you're using a lot of the biceps and back muscles that, yep. you know, you may feel stronger there, but you're definitely going to fatigue a lot quicker than, you know, building up and being able to just kind of like lay on those tendons. Yeah. Yeah, so that's definitely, um, uh, yeah, just getting into that shrug, like, I knew I wasn't going to be able to make anything else, else like, fancy, mm -hmm. um, but going into it, I was like, I can, I can make it pretty far on this, I'll just, I'll just shrug it out. Yeah. Keep going. <laughs> so, so, so you said, so the mini course was your least favorite, so yes. why, why was that one the least favorite? Because I thought you would really like that one. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm pissed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think it goes back into the power, like, uh, power endurance is just like, it, it felt like a stage two course and yeah. stage two is like my biggest, I, I mean, a fear and weakness, you know, like yeah. I hate stage two style courses because I know that I'm just going to burn out yeah, and I know that there's no way around it. You know, luckily this year stage two on the show was a little bit easier. Um, and that saved me, I think yeah. like 100% and it allowed me to get to stage three where I yeah. could show like, Hey, I can hang, you know, I can hang, I can grip out, you know, as just as well, if not better than some of these other guys. But yeah. in the power element, that's definitely where like, I gotta, I gotta step it up. And yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I know going, I knew going into this, uh, it was just gonna be big, but like, yeah, yeah. yeah my goal was yeah. just don't get last, don't get last. <laughs> <laughs> like, what, what, what place did, did you finish in the mini course? Uh, fourth. 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 Yeah. yeah. So yeah. you didn't get last. Didn't get last. <laughs> I'm, I'm okay <laughs> with it. Yeah. Nice, nice. Um, yeah, your mini course run, your second one was actually like insanely good <laughs> up yeah. until the double steps. Oh my god, I know. It was, I felt really good in it yeah. actually too. Um, Especially the sandal line move. That's yeah. something that I've been like. It was super smooth. Yeah, I've been thinking that about that. definitely the most efficient way. Because it allowed. I was surprised the... that everyone was doing Superman. I know. Yeah. And it... Connor, Connor did the link too, I think. Yeah. Yeah, Connor has, Connor has a link, but he's got like that quick like snap. Where yeah. it's like he'd get there no yep. matter what. But yeah. I feel like they took a lot longer setting up the Superman. Yeah, so like back. They, they have to get on there, grab the bar, then they take a front swing, then yeah. they're coming back, and then they're linking yeah. as opposed to just flowing into yeah. it. I think it's an awkward move, though. I don't think a lot of people practice it because mm -hmm. it, it is so it's so funky. You know, yeah. like I've done it a lot, so I feel pretty comfortable with it. But like when you start, it's like <gasps> I'm there. Yeah. Okay, yeah, it's such a short condensed space. Yeah, too. you but gotta you, undershoot. You do a good job with that technique of where it's not so much like a link with the hips; it's more of a chest throw. Yeah, and like that's all that's involved. Yeah, know? and it's so different from body positioning. You know, yeah. there's the two way you can like just throw forward, or yeah. you can like really kick back. And yeah, because you gotta have that reach to yeah. be able to drive through on that follow through swing. Yep. But um, even on the mini course, you had a pretty, uh, pretty sick save. You want to talk, <laughs> you want to talk, about, talk about that? What happened? Yeah, I, uh, I don't know how it happened. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure I reached up, went for the bell, peeled, 
yeah. crowd back on. On the, the step bell. below, not, yeah, not yeah, even the same step. Below. It also wasn't that, it wasn't just that, because you reached for the bell, missed, caught yourself, Reach for the belt again, again yeah. Miss, <laughs> then you slip, yeah. yeah, and then you caught yourself. Yeah. And too, like, I don't know, like, how well the video shows it, but my devil steps move, so yeah. it's not like they're fixed in place, <laughs> yeah. a little bit of like a swing, so yeah. That was definitely an impressive, uh, it was crazy yeah. level of awareness and being able to adapt in the moment, <laughs> yeah. just like quick reflexes. That's, that's been a strike of mine, it seems. Yeah. I, I, would, I would like to stop getting into those positions, <laughs> yeah. Because yeah, you, yeah. you had a few of them, uh, the grip yeah, gauntlet, gauntlet is what happened there, guys. Uh, I forget where it was, but I definitely dropped something. I think it was Captain, Captain Hook. Hook. Captain yeah, Hook. yeah. The, the green cannonball is that. God, I feel like I've been doing, like, uh, we were talking earlier, I did that on Northwest Passage on stage three as well, where I literally got up to the top, I tried to put it in, I let let up on my grip a little and it fell. And then I re-grabbed it. <laughs> so I practiced juggling so yeah. much here <laughs> town. What, do you, what do you think gives you that ability to just like, cause you were so calm about it in the grip con, you yeah. were so calm about it in, on stage three. Yeah, no, I, I think, I don't know. I think just being comfortable and being so focused actually helps me like react. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, I think I'm so focused on my moves that when something goes wrong, I'm like, you have a plan, don't worry about it. If, if I was going to take a guess at it, I'd definitely say it, it, it's experience. And, you yeah, know, you, that's you, another thing. A lot of like high-level athletes, you know, you always hear like their strategies, you know, and um, how great they are. But, you know, when they're like visualizing and planning, it's not just about like everything that's going to go right. Like you got to yeah. expect, you know, especially in this sport, definitely. where it's a lot of coordination, a lot of precision. Um, but you got to expect things to go wrong. And yeah. you see, I think, like a lot of like the higher-up ninjas that, you know, maybe that it's not all strength and power. It's mm -hmm. definitely that mentality of, something's gonna go wrong here, something's gonna get fucked up, and I gotta be willing to accept that and then just take it and, um, take it and keep, keep on moving, you know? Yeah. So I, I definitely think like your experience comes into- I think that's knowledge. a great way to put it too. I think too, like, that's kind of why I try and focus on doing as many competitions as I can. Like I know some of the top level ninjas from the show, you know, they, they don't really do a lot of NNLs and, mm -hmm. or UNAAs or UNXs. Uh, that, I think, just like you said, that's why I try and do a lot is to get that experience and, Cause there's nothing that compares to it. Like you can yeah. run a course at your gym and sure, maybe you'll make a mistake, but it's like, ah, whatever I thought. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas in a course, like that's when you learn to, to pick something up mm -hmm. off the fly or that's when you learn to like, oh, no, hey, I'm adapt. not. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. But there was one fall that you could not adapt from. <laughs> yeah. Let's go into that there was, one. There was there was no was oh man. What happened there? Yeah, on the full course second run, right? Yeah. Full yeah. course second run, yeah. Yeah, that Pretty was... early on. Not completely. I'm first off early. I'm fun early on. <laughs> yeah, no, that was kind of... You know, I was talking with Mike uh, earlier in the episode about uh, just the way that I run courses. You know, my first run is, is typically very cautious, and the second run is where I get reckless. And that's something that I need to work on a lot of, and that's with totally, that totally, ex exactly demonstrates that. You know, yeah. like my first run in uh, the full course runs, I was comfortable, you know, I was moving fast, but I took rest, I chopped up, you know, that's how I'm comfortable. Second run, I, <laughs> for sure, I was like, okay, I gotta, I gotta go for it. And, but then I, I screwed up, you know, and that, yeah. that happens a lot. It's that like reckless mentality that sometimes gets to me after I've touched obstacles. Yeah. You know, that give, it gives me that just a little bit more comfort that I need to make a stupid move. Yeah. You know, and I think yeah. that's what it was, you know, like, I hadn't, I wasn't fully comfortable with it. So I to say what the move, to say what the move was, so. Oh, yeah, it was. Go into the obstacle. Gosh, it was, I think it was. Nunchuck, yep, so squirrel. spider, yep. Yep. and then I jumped to the bar, and I tried to link to the nunchucks and throw to the bow tie. Yep. Um, and I had seen Connor do it, and I feel pretty comfortable linking. You know, that's like one of the things that I'm pretty comfortable with. I knew it was an awkward move, so I was like, all right, I could take like an extra swing and I'd feel really comfortable getting there. Or, you know, like, I think by that point I was already guaranteed like third place, even if I second, like, at, that point. second at that point. So, so that's one of the reasons why I went for it, you yeah. know, and, and that kind of pushed me over the edge. I was like, okay, well, I know that I'm going to get at least second. Yeah. Um, so I might as well try and go first. Um, yeah. And I, I don't even really know what happened. I don't think I got my hips back far enough. Um, and then also the pull off was not I as think much the pull is what. Cause you, you were all out. Yeah. Like your hips pull, were back. Pull, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what I love about linking is there's no saving that, just that short yeah. little yeah. like. If you go like, for it, you go for it. Yeah, <laughs> you, you gotta take a few belly flops yeah. if you're ever gonna really like kinda measure up. Um, but yeah, so those are a couple of hiccups. Is there any, 
uh, like move or technique or strategy that you tried that you were like particularly like proud of or like that you were like really happy with how it turned up? Yeah, I think going in right, right back into linking, uh, I think the wing nuts and the flywheels, I was super happy about, you know? Like, oh, the fidget, the fidget spinners. Fidget spinners, yeah, 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 not flywheels. Um, yeah, that was something that I, like, I knew I could do 100%, felt really comfortable, but I, no one else had done it. Mm -hmm. I think you were the only one who did it on the first round. First round, yes. And then I think Nolan did it in the second round. Yeah, yeah I think a few um, of them like had it set up, but yeah. they didn't commit to that. Yeah. Yeah. And that's something you just see yeah. all the time. It's oh, yeah. like, oh, it's there. You, and you watch it on yeah, tape, yeah, so you're like, like, oh my god, it's right there. What are you doing? Yeah. So, yeah. so that's, yeah, kinda, that's one thing that I'm very happy with, is that I didn't take yeah. that second of like hesitation. Because um, that's kind of like... A lot of what I've been working on is like, you know you can do this move, just do it. You know, it doesn't matter, like if you fall, you fall, but you know you can do it. If you were in the gym, you would go for it. Um, so that's one thing that I, I was pretty happy about, like doing the wing that's yeah, like it. Nice, nice. Nice. Um, was there any part that you, was there any event or like part of the course that you wish you could have done uh, another time? Like mm -hmm. whether it's the grip gauntlet, a second chance? Yeah, or... I, think, I think that, I think grip gauntlet. Really? Um, I think I could have improved a lot on the mini course, um, just mainly because I missed the yeah. stupid bell so many times. So I think I could have improved a lot on that, but I think I would like to redo the grip gauntlet the most, just to see if I could, because honestly I think if I had gotten past the cannonball pegs, I think I would have gotten a lot farther. Yeah. I think yeah, once I, I got onto those fun. rings, yeah, I would have been. Allowed you to shake out a little bit more. For yeah. sure. Friendly. Like, do you think uh, like the other events like had like fatigue set in, or do you think that like like you would have made a lot farther fresh, or do you think it was more like an efficiency? Um, I think it was the cannonball pegs where they were. I think yeah. that was like the make or break, and I think I think that's why like you saw like Nolan. I, I think Nolan just like crossing got stuck as well. Yeah. Um, but then that's where you saw Luke. Like Luke obviously had was comfortable on those the second time. Yep. And you, you saw I mean, for like days too. Yeah, yeah, and he got so much farther, you yeah. know? I think that was really the difference maker was um the cannonballs. I think there was a little bit of fatigue, um, but I think that was like the primary thing was like just where those were placed, you know, the beginning and then when you come back around to it, it's like yeah, this is yeah, you're either gonna go far or you're gonna fall here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Um, if you if you could make an event to try out in like one of our competitions, what like what event would you like to see? Oh, Besides cool. the full course room, you know. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's let's see. Out. I've been thinking a lot about uh, um, salmon ladder challenges because I've been working on skipping a lot. Um, I thought a cool one would be you have like five moves to get as many runs as possible. So you can. Oh, so it's like like yeah. just like five moves. counting down or like yeah, counting down. Count so down. so you can like do whatever technique you want. You can, I don't know, if you want to add a transfer, sure, go for transfers. Yeah, but you have yeah. five moves, do whatever you think is gonna get you the most runs. That's pretty That'd cool. Pretty that, and that's a good, cause like in episode two, no. Uh, one of the later ones. Yeah, one of the later episodes, uh, we do most moves in a minute. So yeah. you can oh, yeah. come, like, come down, you can just yeah. do whatever. So there's a lot of possibilities with yeah. Samurai, so that's cool. Definitely. You know what I was actually thinking about? Cause I was watching, um, uh, Jay Lewis doing mm -hmm. uh, like the salmon ladder tricks. Yeah. I kind of want to do like a gymnastic style, like get five judges and give them like 30 <laughs> seconds. And Point your goddamn them. toes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you better stick <laughs> that lip. <laughs> you gotta do every move straight. Just like, no kipping. I, I was like, that's one thing I was thinking about when you were mentioning like ultimate frisbee and like yeah. what attracts me to ninja. And that's like one thing that like attracts me to it is that like, all right, like it does not have to be perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Dismount onto the box, and yeah. you can continue on. You don't have to stick the landing yeah. for like yeah. three seconds and then move on. Yeah. Yeah, you just can't go like, dunk contest route with that. Uh, Luke got like cars. And yeah, <laughs> <laughs> bring all in the props, yeah. and mascots, and stuff. But like Luke does the shades without like swinging. Like yeah. it's just like all yeah. that. It just it just looks stupid. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like. like <laughs> like, that's just too perfect. Yeah, 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 it's ridiculous. Um, what about what about as far as like uh, competing against another athlete? Uh, anybody in the in the world? Who would you like to compete against in one of these uh, yeah. multi uh, multiple yeah. events? Decathlon style. See, I get I get a few, but I think number one would be Caleb Bergstrom. I uh, think I, I pretty well rounded. Yeah, super well rounded. Uh, also has 
different strengths from me. Like, I know he's super powerful. Um, so, and I think he also has a lot of the same strengths as me. You know, I think Caleb's yeah. just a very, very well-rounded very athlete. Well yeah, yeah. Um, so I think he's someone who I would definitely like to compete against. Just to, honestly, I don't think I've, outside of like Worlds or... Yeah, with, with, he's from Florida, right? Florida, Florida. Florida. Yeah. I don't think I've ever been able to. I know like, he's come up to a few UNXs and he, he, the only UNX he didn't do was the one that I did. Um, Which one? The real uh, The third, uh, the third yeah. major. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, yeah, yeah. So I, yeah, I, mean, I just, he's an athlete who's super strong, super well-rounded. What um, event would you, uh, what event do you think you'd take him in? Course run? That's tough. I, yeah, I think course run would be my best bet or maybe some agility or balance type thing. Mm -hmm. That's one thing that I think like, I feel super comfortable on is agility and balance. Really? That's, a yeah. good, that's a good combo builder. That oh, always yeah. seems to be like the one that's in everybody's head yeah. before the competition, you know? Yeah, so. that's, that's huge for me. I think like, uh, that's something that, like like you said, it's always in everyone else's head, and it's not really ever in mine. That's great. So I think I think I could take him in that too, but as long as it's not a line of nunchucks. Oh my God, yeah, I know. Like, oh no. Yep. All right. Well, I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> I, surrender. Was fun. I surrender, Caleb. All right, there it is, Caleb Lucas Reality yeah. talking yeah. shit. <laughs> Fly up from Florida. Yep. All right. All right. Cool. Like that. Do you want to do the rankings? Yeah. Sure. Um, all right. Okay, so the topic. I think it's so. pretty good. Yeah, we covered a lot. Yeah. Um, all right, so to wrap this up, last question for you. Ranking these obstacles, these are like five Ninja Classics that you're always going to see. Salmon Ladder, Warp Wall, a uh, Trapeze yep. obstacle, Cliffhanger, Jumping Spider. All right. That's tough. You can rank them however you want, whether yeah. like your favorite or strongest. I got you. Yeah, I'll go, I'll go favorite. I think, because it kind of plays into strongest too. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I think favorite, like number one, has to be cliffhanger. I think it's just like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know you know that. <laughs> that was awesome, whatever. <laughs> yeah, that's always been like. I, I think it's something that I've wanted to work on a lot too, just because I like it so much. You yeah. know, like it's so cool that like you're throwing yourself on these ledges. You yeah, know? I think it's just so so awesome. When you like nail a good cliffhanger, you feel so good. So it's good. Like it's I'm so good. satisfying. Yeah. So I think that has to be number one. You guys one. obviously don't fail them enough. <laughs> it's, like, it's not worth it. <laughs> just stay away. I think I gotta go down to the bottom now. I think number five, as much as I hate to admit it, because I actually really like this, but I think five is Warp Wall. Oh, really? Yeah, and it used to be up higher for me, but I, I think five is Warp Wall. I think it's just, it's a little generic now. And okay. honestly, when I run at 14 foot Warp Walls, I'm like, whatever. You know, it's yeah, like, yeah. I just, I, this is just something in my way, <laughs> you know? <laughs> That's true, it is like kind of like, either you can do it or you can. Yeah, just there, for sure. Know? So, unless they get, get like creative with it, but it is, uh, yeah. it is kind of like just there, you know? And then 18 foot warp balls, you gotta either train really hard, or you just don't do them. And yeah. It's like, so I think that would be my lowest. Next two, I'll go two, three, four next. I don't know. It's, so you have trapeze, spider, and salmon ladder. That's really tough. I, I would put probably all of these very close to each other. I think I'd probably go trapeze second. Okay. I like flying, I like laches. I would probably go salmon ladder third and spider fourth. Nobody's ever gonna pick the jump and spider. Well, that, that's what I mean. <laughs> See, that's, that's what I didn't it's want. My last. <laughs> it's my last. Because I do really like the jumping spider a lot more than a lot of obstacles because I love trampolines. Yeah, one yeah, of my like, yeah, favorite it's, it's, aspects. It's, it's but uh, but yeah, I don't think I can put it above simple trapeze laches or. Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna track these throughout the entire mm -hmm. process of this. I think we'll you're see. right though. I, I think spider is gonna be. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> spider is <laughs> definitely my number one. I think spider <laughs> and more ball are always gonna like consistently be down at the bottom. Yeah. It's just gonna show like yeah. no uh, one likes lower body obstacles. Trapeze, yeah, trapeze. Is really yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> a great point. <laughs> no one, lower body obstacles are always gonna be for <laughs> I don't know, you guys gotta put yours in then. You gotta... Oh, it's easy. It'd go warp wall because I'm tall. <laughs> It'd go spider because I got long legs and I can jump pretty far. Do you ever feel like you get like trapped, like you feel squeezed in there? I used to. I used to like kind of always be like afraid of like slipping, like when I yeah. first started. Like I was always like paranoid because you watch other people like slip, but yeah. I don't know. I've always, I've never had a problem with them. And I've always like, after like first couple comps, they were like fine with me. I, I, prefer them really I think and too I, I don't think people get creative enough with them like I think it's yeah. always like here's a jumping spider alright oh, I was like the I Japan like, ones 
It's so cool. Yeah, yeah like we got that TIE like, Fighter thing? Yeah, yeah that's awesome. a dream obstacle. Dude, yeah, like, that's Ninja the Quest best. version was so awesome. Yeah, yeah you know? Yeah, but like, you can, yeah. Yeah. You can so like, shake cool. to him, you can swing into him. You can yeah. camp I love the spider. Then I'd probably, I yeah, spider, warp wall, salmon ladder. I don't know. I think Salmon Ladders would kind of got me hooked on Ninja. Yeah. Then oh, Trapeze, yeah. and then I wouldn't even drink <laughs> right. the thing. <laughs> just one, way. two, four. Sounds like that's, that's an impeccable list. <laughs> what more do you want? Yeah, yeah. yeah no. Cliffhanger is just uh, uh, fingers long and it's just. Yeah. I, you got it, these big hands. Yeah, but like some things, like like I'll drill like the like if I if I don't practice Salmon Ladder for a while, like the first time I do it, it's like oh that sucks. But yeah. then I'll start practicing and like you improve so quickly at it. Whereas, oh, like, where's just the clip? Yeah, yeah. Just like, you gotta keep just it. like, I've tried everything. <laughs> yeah, I took like a week off from cliffhanger. It's like, well, I guess next year I'll be good at it. Yeah, yeah right? it's, it's like the one thing. That's why I feel with vertical limits. Oh, oh yeah. God. See, I actually prefer vertical limits. Well, you like pinch. That, that's the, the thing. I think I can get like, right? more like biceps involved and stuff like okay. that. Yeah, I prefer a vertical yeah. limit. But See, that's why I'm the opposite. Vertical. You know, I can hang on cliffhangers. I can't hang on vertical lines. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You one arm a, a cliffhanger. Because I've, I've seen you do it before, yeah. too. And I was like, I feel like I train cliffhanger a lot. I feel very comfortable on it. Do not feel confident one arming. Yeah, that's it's something I've been working on quite a bit. And yeah. it's definitely like, I think climbing helps a lot, too. Yeah. Like, I've, I've yeah. climbed a lot. Uh, and specifically, I like crimpy, crimpy problems. Like, I like climbing. Yeah. <laughs> Sit with that cliffhanger. Yeah. It's the feet. Uh, <laughs> no feet makes a big difference. That's probably <laughs> yeah. it. I don't know. I don't know. What's, what's yours? Uh, I'm definitely going to agree cliffhanger. That's your favorite? Yeah, favorite. Let's go. Why would it be your favorite? Like, like <laughs> trapeze? How is it better than a trapeze? Tra- I don't know. You got wing nuts. Trapeze are fun. You got, got like, sky hooks. Or something. Yeah. There's a lot of technique with trapeze, which yeah, is one sure, thing that like, draws me to it. Yeah. The salmon ladder is surprisingly low for me, actually. I think I put salmon ladder at like four or five. You haven't watched the arrow, that's why. <laughs> so you gotta watch Arrow. Do you ever even amount? Best you, Ninja Warrior yeah. of all time. Yeah. I mean, come on, how many people like just started training the door because they saw that? You know? Dude, I, I didn't see that scene actually until like fairly late in my ninja career. I was like, dude, he's got a switch grip. Like, <laughs> <laughs> he's a like, You get him off. You get him out of the quick. That was not to do. <laughs> this guy's definitely gonna peel off his bar. Yeah. He's not gonna expect it, but one day, <laughs> one he's just gonna... Days. So you go I think I would go cliffhanger, warp wall, Interesting. trapeze... Wait a minute, you're making no sense here. <laughs> cliffhanger, and then yeah. you go warp wall? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why? I, I really like the 18 foot warp wall. I know that I will, like, there is such a slim chance that I will ever get to, like, try it for real, but it's so satisfying when you get it. Yeah, that's um, a good point. Alright, and then trapeze? Then trapeze. Yeah. Uh, same letter spider. Yeah, poor, you got it. Poor spider. Yeah, I know. I know Jordan, you gotta, you gotta rally for it. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna make a campaign. <laughs> save the spider. Save, save the spider. They never use it either. They had the, like, they always use it in like, the lamest ways. Yeah, yeah. They have stage one, which is cool. It's just yeah. like the traditional. It's, yeah. it's something you could always like miss. But yeah. then what, what else did they use on? Just like the drop to the trampoline, but it was more of a trampoline obstacle than yeah. a... So yeah. I got taken out in this in NNL Finals Season 3, um, down at Ninja Quest, where oh, it was right, a little right, right. into it. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's awesome. That was great. Was like, cool. as much as it took me out and as upset yeah, as I was, that's, that's great. There's a lot more yeah. variety to it. Like, yeah. You can double spiders, you can just play around with them all day. You got me hooked. I, I want TIE Fighter for a city qualifying this year. Like, yeah. right now. TIE Fighter. AW, get on it. <laughs> TIE Fighter. <laughs> you heard it here at AW. You heard it like, here. I feel like get the TIE Fighter. is an out of... I feel like building oh, really? it is that an seems like a nightmare. <laughs> No, no, no. Building it, do it. I can get the structure. I don't know if I can set it up. <laughs> like, like, I don't know where to begin. Can you leave? Like, yeah. Like, yeah. What's that? Thing? Yeah. It's a torture device. For the business. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, we're gonna get the. We're gonna get some votes for the spider. Cause I feel like it's a. Uh, it's very overlooked and not. Yeah. Not utilized. Hey, I'm on. I'm on team spider, but. Hey, okay. Again, I like the spider a lot, but then when I'm comparing it to the rest of those, gotta gotta give it a bottom spot. Yeah. Unfortunately. I'm gonna. <laughs> not a cliffhanger on that list. <laughs> that thing deserved. That's fair, that's fair. All right. Well, Lucas, that's all we got for today. Thanks again for joining us. This was sick. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. It was nice to awesome. sit down and talk with you guys. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, we are super excited to have you back sometime. Um, Anytime. 
against Caleb. Caleb. Against Caleb. <laughs> against Caleb. <laughs> Gauntlet has been thrown down. Yeah, against Caleb. Hey, I'll fight out of Florida sometimes. I've yeah, always wanted to go to his gym. <laughs> <laughs> that's the spirit. Take you on at home. Oh, yeah, yeah, actually, wait, 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 wait. We're going to another one. We need like a third fight. Yeah, we're going to another one. We'll set some grip lines on like a calisthenic park down there. All right, well, that's all we got. Uh, thanks again for joining us. Check out the episode on YouTube and Instagram and all that other shit. Woo! Sounds good. All right. I went well. Yeah. Good